Hello friends, this video on Organic Chemistry Basics Part 46 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We talk about the quantity analysis of various elements. And here we'll talk about detection of the element. We'll talk about detection of carbon hydrogen. We'll talk about detection of nitrogen. We'll talk about detection of sulfur, halogens, phosphorus. So we'll talk about detection of all these elements. Let's start with carbon and hydrogen. So this is my carbon and this is really nitrogen, this is gaseous and it's always in the cylinder, right? So how to find carbon and or how to detect whether a particular organic compound has carbon or hydrogen. So they are detected by heating the compound with copper oxide. See if the organic compound had carbon, the carbon will react with copper oxide to give carbon dioxide. If the organic component hydrogen, it will react with copper oxide to give water. So we will collect water and carbon dioxide and with that amount, with this carbon dioxide and water, if we know the quantity of carbon dioxide in our water form, we can tell actually how much carbon dioxide and hydrogen organic compound had. Correct? See, even organic compound may have carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, anything. So if whatever amount of carbon that was there in the organic compound, it will react with copper oxide to form carbon dioxide. We can easily find the carbon dioxide and example in this case what we do is we have this organic compound we heat this right. So if it had carbon if it had hydrogen maybe sulfur, phosphorus anything. So carbon whatever carbon it had it gave carbon dioxide right and carbon dioxide is I am absorbing now this carbon dioxide in this calcium hydroxide right correct it will now with this, I can find the amount of carbon. Similarly, the water which I got, I have put this copper sulphate here. This was white, right? This was white. After this reaction, it became blue. Why? Because copper sulphate absorbed water. So with this, I can say, yes, I'm not trying to find the percentage of carbon or hydrogen in this chapter, I mean, in this slide, we'll do that later. I just I am trying to confirm whether carbon or hydrogen is present or not. So in that case, if hydrogen is present, what will you do? It will it'll give water. To find the presence of water, what you do? You add copper sulphate white. The moment you put copper sulphate white here, it, with water it becomes blue because it forms copper sulphate white dot 5s2. Correct. If it had carbon, on heating it will give carbon dioxide and you put the lime water, it will turn into milky. Correct. Because I know the carbon dioxide test is, it turns lime water milky. Correct. So with this we can detect carbon and hydrogen. So you take the organic compound, just heat up whatever gas you get, you pass it through copper sulphate. If it turns blue, that means it has water, right? Copper sulphate white will turn blue, that means it is water. And then if you pass the same gas with uh, my lime water, if it turns milky, that means it has carbon also. Correct. So we see carbon is oxidized to carbon dioxide and we can test this with a lime water test and hydrogen is oxidized with water and water you can test easily with copper sulphate anhydrous which is white and the moment you add water it becomes now what if you want to find nitrogen nitrogen looks something like this right it goes like water only we have to detect nitrogen so in that case what we do we have one test called soda line test what we do in this case we take this soda line right we heat this organic compound in the soda line and if it ammonia, if it gives ammonia gas, it means it has nitrogen. But this is not 100%. This is almost 98%. In 98% of the scenario, any uh, organic compound which has nitrogen in it, the moment you heat with soda line, it will give ammonia. But there are some chances where it may not eat ammonia, but it still have nitrogen. So what we do is we use this test. So we use Lassagne test to find nitrogen. So what we do in this case, the first step we do is we convert this nitrogen to ionic nitrogen. So if you see the nitrogen generally, if I'm talking about the organic compound, that means the nitrogen has to be in the covalent form, correct? So now, for example, anything, you take any organic compound, the nitrogen will always be in the covalent form. You take amide, amine, it will always be in the covalent form. You convert into ionic form by fusing with sodium. So if you see sodium metal, and you have this carbon nitrogen, obviously this is my organic compound. 
it converts into NaCN and this is ionic in nature. Right? So once you get NaCN, that is my sodium cyanide, we can easily extract this right, by boiling it with distilled water. Correct. So now we have the so sodium fusion extract. Right? This, the extract which you got from it is called sodium fusion extract. So now, now what we'll do with this, we'll take the sodium fusion extract, we'll boil with iron sulfate. And then, you see this is my sodium fusion extract, we'll boil with iron sulfate, we'll get something like this. Now we'll take this and we'll acidify this with sulfuric acid. And this will form a Persian blue color. And this confirms nitrogen. And that's the test of nitrogen actually. Right, so you have this nitrogen in the covalent bond, convert into ionic bond, get the sodium fusion extract, sodium fusion extract, react with iron sulfate and then sulfuric acid, and you get Persian blue color. That confirms the presence of nitrogen. Let's take a numerical on this. In the Lassans test of nitrogen, but the Persian blue color is due to what? So it is due to we just saw. Let's understand the detection of sulfur again using the same test. So here also what we do, the sulfur which is there in the covalent form, we convert into ionic form. How to do that? We fuse that with a sodium metal. So I have a sodium metal, this was my covalent sulfur, I made into ionic sulfur, right? So this is my ionic sulfur now. Correct. And now with the sodium fusion extract which you have got, right? this extract which we have got this guy. Now if you acidify this with acetic acid and lead acetate is added to it, you get PVS and it is black. The moment you get a black color that means it is sodium. Correct. Now there can be compound where you have sodium also and nitrogen also. Sorry. And, uh, nitrogen also and sulfur also. So this confirms the presence of sulfur. This is sulfur mine. Right? This is sulfur urine color. So, Con presence of sulfur is confirmed now, right? But we want to know whether sulfur and nitrogen both are present or only sulfur is present. Because there are scenarios where we have both sulfur and nitrogen and somewhere we have only sulfur. So in that case, whatever we have got now, right, this guy, right? You treat with this guy, sodium nitro -tushites. If it gives violet color, that means only sulfur is present, right? If nitrogen is present, then it gives when you treat this guy with iron, right, you get this guy. That's, that's red color. This is red color. Color. So the cash here is, if there is a nitrogen presence with sulfur, the first test which we have learned where we get the Persian blue color won't come here. Why? Because there is no free cyanide ions, right? So if I have sulfur and nitrogen both, then I have this guy, SCN minus, SCN minus 2, right? So this guy, SCN minus, if I have right, so this guy will not give Persian color. So if I can have this guy or I can have this guy. So if I have this guy, I get Persian blue color. But if I have this guy, I don't get Persian blue color. In that case, I get blood red color. Correct. Hope you understand. So if I get blood red color, that means I have both sulfur and nitrogen. If I get Persian blue color, I have only nitrogen. Let's understand the detection of halogens again from the science test. So here also what we do the first thing we convert the covalent uh, form of halogens to ionic form. To do this we use sodium metal right sodium. So you get NaX now this is a plus X minus that's a covalent form. Correct. So now I have this sodium fusion extract. I again acidify this with nitric acid and then I get treat with silver nitrate AgN3, you get AgX, correct? So I, if I have AgX, a white precipitate, precipitate soluble in ammonium hydroxide, so is the presence of chlorine, correct? But there can be, this is my chlorine, this is my bromine, this can be iodine, but there can be fluorine, bromine, iodine also, so how does that? So in that case, if the sodium, if, the, if you put this in ammonium hydroxide, if you get yellow colors, it means it is a bromine. Right? If the yellow color is insoluble, this is soluble in ammonium hydroxide, it is iodine. So please know what we have done. We have got this, we have this covalent halogen. We converted this to ionic halogen. This ionic halogen extract I got, sodium extract, I treated this guy with silver nitrate and in the 
acidic medium with nitric acid i got agx this x can be chlorine fluorine bromine iodine anything so for chlorine what you do is you 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 just dissolve this in ammonium hydroxide right ammonium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide so if you dissolve in ammonium hydroxide if you get white precipitate it is chlorine if you get yellow precipitate that is slightly soluble that is bromine if you get yellow precipitate this is not, this is not soluble it is iodine and please note that if nitrogen and sulfur are also present in this they will interfere correct if i have something which have nitrogen sulfur and iodine things they will interfere so so in this case the sodium fusion extract is first boil with nitric acid to decompose cyanide ion or sulfide ion and then we use the normal test then right? just we want to remove this guys first let's understand detection of phosphorus the compound is first heated with the oxidizing agent called sodium peroxide so with that what happens is the phosphorus which is present is oxidized to phosphate so i don't have phosphorus now i have phosphate now this phosphate is boiled with nitric acid and then with ammonium molybdate so if you see yellow colors appears in the case of phosphate this is the reaction i have got the phosphate in this reaction so this phosphate when it react with the nitric acid you get s3po4 and nano3 correct and this guy when you when you treat with ammonium molybdate this guy you get this compound and this compound is yellow in color this is how you detect phosphorus right you heat with oxidizing oxidizing agent you make it phosphate any oxidizing agent you make it phosphate and then you treat with nitric acid and then whatever you you get s3po4 right and this s3po4 when you react with ammonium molybdate you get yellow color the question is why we fuse uh, metal sodiums with the organic compound why because they are covalent in nature actually so if you see all this sulfur nitrogen phosphorus they all halogen they are covalent in nature we want to make it ionic from covalent to ionic right and that's why we fuse with sodium correct so sulfur becomes na2s is ionic right cn becomes nacn again it's ionic phosphorus becomes na3po4 ionic so we just fuse them with uh, sodium to make it ionic thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again